uh, just getting ready for the second watch and just interesting because the wastewater has pretty much twice as much almost as the rainwater so that may not turn out to be anything long term with the M state materials but it's worth noting so at this stage the solution has been run up to 10.7 and as you see here on the graph uh, they have been run down uh, to pH 1 um, I don't want to keep showing you these graphs and boring you with them all the time but it does reinforce the idea that uh, you do have to be careful at the end of the reaction and it shows you roughly how much solution you need um, with the parameters that I'm using um, so the result so far is you can see the clear solutions that I've uh, racked off the sediment and the sediment I did put into the cups and try and maintain a pH of 1 which it keeps shifting around the place all the time and most of the sediment has actually disappeared you can you can see some it's a bit fuzzy in there um, but it's it's gradually you can see that's graduated it's, it's uh, gradually dissolving in solution which is a, a little bit of a worry I had hoped to stratify it and be able to rack off some clear solution uh, it's pretty much the same on all of them the only difference with this one is I poured it from a different container uh, into that container and it hasn't um, settled out if it's if it's going to. So what I think I'll do is that I'll take the three clear ones up to up to 8.5, 8.7. Um, but the others I won't wait around for a clear solution. It's been a couple of days now. Uh, I think I've got no choice with that dissolving precipitate to uh, take it all the way up to above 12 and come back from there and hopefully isolate m state that way so i think that's what i'll do the reaction to ph 8.5 is complete uh, you can see that the the wastewater required more solution to get to 8.5 and again you can see how dramatically steep that curve is how difficult it is um, the control was the least amount and the anti-magnetic water in between um, so I've just really finished it just then and I've um, well I've settled enough to get a reasonable idea of a comparison so these have been precipitated at 8.5 and I've put them into a jar just to get as much of that fluid off as possible and get a measurement so I've put a line on each of those um, they're not really jars there my wife's um, tumblers out of the kitchen and put a mark on there at the level so I'll use my uh, trusty scales to do a, a tear and weight and measure um, to work out both volume and uh, weight so but at this stage for a, a quick little vidi then it looks like the two M water ones are uh, have got the greater amount of almost so the greatest of all seems to be the wastewater and the magnet magnetically trapped or rejected water uh, is close to it and the rainwater less so apart from M water and, and wastewater being around the wrong way then there does seem to be something associated with the magnetic trap so let's do the weighing after the weighing you can see that the wastewater had the greatest mass, volume and density compared to the anti-magnetic water. Uh, the rainwater was less on all except for the density, it was more dense than anti-magnetic water, whatever that means. Um, so it's confirmed that the wastewater was actually better than the anti-magnetic water for some reason. Also retreated the solution in the get that to focus and the glasses I put that on a in an oil bath and heated them up and you can see that they've resettled back down cleared and also the precipitate's gone from a orangey brown uh, to white so the solution did clear but I was reluctant to put it in with uh, the the main samples um, so I'll take that up to 12 separately and back down again and see what happens.
So the slurries were brought to 12 without too much trouble. You can see that they've come out in a different order. And in fact, if I can just include that, that they've come out in the reverse order of the previous titration, up to 8.5, so whatever that means. And so I've, I did them in uh, proper beakers, uh, but I just poured them back into smaller glasses just so that they can settle the precipitate into a smaller area and get the solution off better that contains the M-state. Also in the middle, I'm missing a glass, uh, the rainwater control, uh, right at the very end of uh, just just cleaning it up and um, and I spilt it, actually I spilled them both but it was on a tray so I had, had enough for one glass and it's still worth doing because it's so close to so close to being half, if you can pick that out, uh, that I should be able to just double the result and know what's going on there. So I'm going to rack these off and keep the solution in this case because that should contain the M-state. And the slurry, I'm thinking of making up a solution of uh, pH 12, uh, sodium hydroxide, and washing it, not in water, but washing it in sodium hydroxide. So if the pH remains at 12, I shouldn't alter anything. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that because I've got so much precipitate there that I'm thinking there's quite a bit of M-state suspended in the solution that's that that's sitting in, so I haven't got a centrifuge, so I think the next big thing to do is to wash it out with a pH 12 solution and keep that and add that to um, the solution that I'll rack off now. So that's what I'll do. Running all three to 12, down to 8.5 and up to 10.7, uh, yielded very little precipitate, so I've just combined them all together because I'll eventually put them in a thin glass so I can extract what's in there. It is very slightly cloudy so uh, there wasn't much in the waste precipitate which is great. Uh, what is there uh, would have been in the small amount of uh, solution that was amongst it. So, And I've got so little that when combined this is the final amount so I won't bother altering the results. It was so Little it was almost indetectable and seemed to be a similar amount for each one. So this will just go in with the, the rest of the storehouse.